what is happening now? I mean, maybe if you put yourself, project yourself 20 years into the future and look back, how would you describe what's happening now? Maybe we don't have a name for it, but what phase are we in? What's the, the, the dominant theory, or is there even one? I wouldn't say there's a dominant theory, but of course we all um, know that certain shifts in society happened during, the, happened during the last years. There was an economical crisis in 2008, 2009. Now we already see this as a past. We see it from a perspective that two years ago we, w we were completely involved in this crisis. Mm. Now again, again, this has become our past and we reflect on it. So um, there was a movement during the last years that was also reflected in, I think, one of the previous discussions about design and art. Um, this idea is, I think, no longer so important because this approach of art and design was interesting in a time when the art market was booming, <laughs> where um, designers um, were able to sell products for very high prices through gallery, through limited edition companies, etc. And now, since one year, we see a shift back to, to completely opposite ideas. So, um, I think that's what we see today. I wouldn't speak about a movement because a movement needs a certain background in front of which you can identify it. And I think our background today is very unstable and very quick. And as long as we have uh, a new idea or a new trend every one or two years, there is not the, the background for a real movement to be identified. Think about the 1970s. The 1970s were a very strange decade in design because there was this oil crisis in the beginning of the 70s Suddenly, all the plastic furniture disappeared that was dominating in the 60s. And there were some years where people tried out things and people rather thought and, and conceived things. But it was a rather quiet time in terms of real movement. There was something like alchemia, but, but very... And only because the 70s were this way, Memphis could come at the beginning of the 80s and appear as a real new movement. So I think maybe today we're experiencing a, a time of reflection or maybe a time of just stepping back some steps and looking at our own development from more distance and maybe it needs some years and then suddenly this new movement gets clearer. I think mm -hmm. a movement rather appears than it is created. I think um, <coughs> what uh, Matteo just mentioned uh, is one of the biggest challenge for us as a manufacturer is yes we have survived the crisis, the economical and financial crisis, but what is the impact of the crisis on the appreciation of design, on uh, the, um, let's say, uh, willingness to pay a certain price for well-designed product, uh, and so on and so on. And we haven't found yet the answer, but uh, you know what I can tell is that my team, um, together with uh, with uh, Michael Sieger and Mike Mirey, we we are going through a phase where we try to find out what are the consequences of this crisis mm -hmm. for a premium brand manufacturer. And um, this also needs certainly to be discussed you know, in, in regards to the developed countries as well as those countries which we are not really affected by the crisis that much, like uh, for example China. Um, what, what I see is that um, the appreciation of quality is coming back um, before the crisis, at least here in Germany and certain other countries, it was price, price, price and uh, a very price oriented uh, consumer out there. Now the quality is coming back. Kind of the crisis has um, led to a rethinking about where do I invest my money, which is probably less maybe than before, where do I invest it? So uh, I invested in quality, that's apparently an answer of the consumer. And uh, the second, and hopefully the panel also uh, this afternoon will, will discuss that, is what consequence in regards to the formal or aesthetical approach to a design we will have to uh, you know, uh, derive from our discussions about the crisis. And then one of the, uh, I think, ch challenges and chances a crisis gives us is to reflect really on the past, to reflect what do we think about, about the future? And I see for our company two trends which will definitely um, have an important role 
for future product development, and that is uh, the digitalization, which in communication is already there, but what does the digitalization, what effects does the uh, dig digitalization have on <coughs> products which not necessarily are cu communicative products, like, like a faucet or like a bathtub or like maybe textiles and so on. So this is a question we, I think we are exploring already right now. And uh, one of the second major driving forces which we need to take care of is really, and I think the crisis has made this, has increased the awareness of this challenge, are the demographic uh, challenges, in our, in, especially in the developed countries. Um, um, how do we find answers for, um, in general, the social uh, challenge of our societies becoming older and older? Mm. And th these, these, I think the crisis has helped us to put this on, into the front of our agenda. I think it's interesting that you mentioned these two aspects, demographics and digitalization, because these are two factors which cannot be invented. They are there and yes. they are real. So I think if you look at design history, most of the movements have come from this kind of factors. That means they were not invented or, or uh, pushed by a market or so, but they were there because they were the logical consequence of something happening in society like in the 1920s when uh, people started to use tubular steel and suddenly um, this was the means to realize in aesthetics that the style um, had invented in wood but some years later the, real the, the right material for this appeared. So uh, I, I think these kind of movements um, are what, what, really, um, what really gives a movement a relevance and I think there are of course a lot of other subjects like um, sustainability, um, which is a similar factor and has yes. been discussed for some years, but what we see in the last years is that we are very interested in giving sustainability a big importance, but at the moment another trend comes, we're saying, okay, um, let's leave it away for some years and then when the market is, is getting worse, we're thinking again about it. So. I think th the question is to develop an attitude that we take these kind of realistic factors seriously and, and not um, forget about them the moment we have a big boom in, in the economy and we can sell um, designers art for some years. So we've identified four possible um, movements or perhaps triggers for movement, supernormal, sustainability, in fact, there was a book out recently called Sustainism, which was proposing that sustainability was the new ism. Uh, the impact of the digital, both on the way that people work and the way that that is embedded in the things that we do. Actually, it's interesting if you look back at Apple products, the, the, the first Apple product that really caught everyone's imagination was the iMac, which was, it was blobby, it was colorful, it, it took all the tricks from other kinds of three-dimensional objects. And if you look back on it, the design was actually quite terrible. It was it, the, the round mouse. What a crazy idea, a round mouse. Uh, but now they've almost removed design from the equation. The, the, the iPad is just a flat piece of glass, and design disappears, gets out of the way to allow you to access the interesting stuff, which is the software inside as easily as possible. Uh, and then the fourth one that Andreas mentioned was the impact of, of demographics changing populations. Um, I'd like to ask you, uh, Michael, what do you, the same question as before, what do you think is happening uh, today and are any of those four concepts enough to constitute a design movement or become one in, in the sense of that movements became important in the last century? It, it's always uh, difficult to forecast the new uh, move, uh, movement and, and uh, yeah, as we are, th there are several things uh, happening right now or happened uh, the last years and uh, I think the, the, the crisis we experienced uh, probably the, the strongest impact is that uh, uh, design probably lost its, its status so design is not anymore a, a status symbol um, and um, the, the other for, for me most important uh, thing for the future is uh, Yes, sustainability or the, the uh, uh, environmental problems we face because the fi finance uh, crisis we will overcome or probably in Germany we have overcome it already and uh, probably there will be another one in, in some or two years and we will overcome this again. 
but the, the uh, environmental problems we are facing, I think they won't uh, go away so, so fast, or they probably will last for the next uh, decades. So I think this will be the, the topic which has the, the, the biggest impact on design and also on industrial de uh, development. And so for, for me, uh, I think, uh, yeah, the design has to be very serious in, in the future and uh, yeah, concentrate uh, very much on, on questions like uh, what, what materials are used and, and uh, how long they will last and uh, wh where do I produce uh, the products. I think what we experience uh, since, since the crisis, and I'm, I'm um, you know, trying to, to word it in my own words, what Michael has said is, it's not important anymore to own the design product, but it's really to enjoy to use it. That's what is important. This is what we're experiencing right now in the bathroom, is that the, the water, I mean, we changed our claim to spirit of water before the crisis, but now it has really gained the importance. It's, it's really, you know, if we look at our rain sky, where, where the raindrops are falling out of the ceiling, there's not really Michael, any, any design anymore, it's just a flat uh, stainless steel plate with a couple of holes. <coughs> but, but what the people are enjoying is the water coming out of it. And this has been a driving force for us over the last five, six years. And I think the crisis is strengthening it, is, 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 is really pushing it forward, that, that the way uh, people you know, experience how the water is being delivered to them is more important, in general, more important than uh, a trendy design mm. product which delivers the faucet. So, so the, the experience of the water is important, not the experience of the tap. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, certainly the design has to have a, a very good and uh, aesthetic quality. But this additional add-on, if I may say, um, I think is helping us to, you know, to create a certain evolution uh, in our industry. I mean, you can face it or you can realize not only looking at the, at the faucet, if you look in the, to the bathroom in, in total, maybe 10, 15 years ago, uh, the most important thing was yeah, that it's a nice bathroom and that you have a nice object, uh, ceramics, bathtub, <laughs> but uh, more and more the, the people say, okay, what, what, are, what am I going to do in the bathroom? How will I use it? Well, what, uh, what is it for? And so it's more the question about functionality and, and uh, what I will experience in the bathroom instead of yeah, having just a nice one and probably showing it to my friends that I can afford to have a Dornbracht uh, faucet. So. so it's less a status symbol really uh, to show off, uh, you know, that one has <coughs> the or is in the possession of design icons. I think it's really the way one personally interacts interacts with, with, with the product. Mm -hmm. That seems to be, you know, I mean also, what that is, I think, is also the success of, of the Apple design is really, as you said, it's, it's less design, but it's really the interaction with, with the product which becomes, becomes a certain value. Mm -hmm.